Japan's Olympic minister wants events in the 2020 Tokyo Games to be held in Fukushima Prefecture. Toshiaki Endo made the request to the head of the organizing committee for the Summer Games, Yoshiro Mori. The prefecture was the region hardest hit by the 2011 earthquake and tsunami. Endo said the Fukushima governor has asked in the, if his prefecture can host some of the qualifiers for five proposed new Olympic sports, including baseball and softball. I think disaster hit regions can host a number of qualifiers. These could be based in Fukushima. If qualifiers can be held in other regional areas as well, the 2020 Olympics and Paralympics will be an event for all of Japan. What he indicated, he'll consider the request positively. 0.30 microsievert per hour. On the 21st day of December year 2014, Nasu Nogahara Park, Nasu Shiobara City, Tochigi Prefecture, Japan. Tennis court no chikaku no hayashi no naka, ochiba no ue no 空間の放射線量胸の高さで 0.40 マイクロシーベルトパワーです Now, tourists to Japan will soon find it easier to sample cuisines in regional areas. The country's main tourism agency will team up with a leading online restaurant guide to arrange tours throughout the country for food enthusiasts. 
The National Tourism Organization plans to announce on Wednesday it will begin working on projects next month with website operator Guru Navi. They will co they'll cooperate with travel agencies to arrange 17 package tours. Visitors will be taken to locations across the country to enjoy local specialties. A tourism boom has given a big boost to Japanese businesses. The number of visitors from abroad is expected to rise even higher when Tokyo hosts the 2020 Olympic and Paralympic Games. However, tourism spending has largely been limited to big cities and a few popular destinations. Hopes are high that the tie-up will help spread the benefits to restaurants and other businesses in rural areas. Japanese nuclear watchdogs are once again setting their sights on a facility with a long history of trouble. They want to question the head of the operator of a fast breeder reactor in central Japan over safety concerns. Officials at the Nuclear Regulation Authority conduct regular inspections of the Monju reactor. They revealed that in August they found at least 3,000 mistakes with safety classifications. They said equipment and devices of high importance were among those ranked lower and they suggested the operator, Japan Atomic Energy Agency, might not have carried out necessary inspections for them. The NRA officials said the operator handled data poorly, so they were unable to grasp the exact nature of the problems. Some said no one would trust the operator because there have been so many problems. NRA Chairman Shuichi Tanaka said the matter would cast doubt on whether the operator is qualified. Safety is our top priority, but considering the present situation, the reactor is far from safe. The Monju prototype reactor began operating in the early 90s, but it was forced to shut down in 1995 after a sodium leak. The reactor was brought back online on a trial basis in 2010, but was halted due to further problems. NRA commissioners suggested a ban on test runs would remain in place. The operator pledged to continue to improve its procedures, putting the top priority on safety. Japanese and U.S. officials have reached a deal on environmental monitoring inside American military bases in Japan. They hope the agreement will advance a contested plan to relocate a U.S. base in Okinawa Prefecture. Japanese Foreign Minister Fumio Kishida and U.S. Defense Secretary Ash Carter signed the accord at the Pentagon. It will allow national and local Japanese officials to conduct environmental inspections inside U.S. bases. They'll also have access to areas the U.S. military is expected to return to Japanese control. The deal supplements the Japan-U.S. Status of Forces Agreement, which requires the U.S. to grant permission to enter such facilities. Japan and the United States must continue pursuing efforts to reduce Okinawa's burden. We exchanged views on that issue. 
Okinawa currently hosts more than 70% of U.S. military facilities in Japan. Authorities there have been pressing for access to the bases to conduct environmental surveys. Chida said Japanese and U.S. officials hope the accord will help facilitate the relocation of the U.S. Futenma Air Station in Okinawa. Both sides want to move the base from a densely populated area to a coastal district in the prefecture. Local leaders want the base moved outside Okinawa. The Japanese are a people who view and will continue to view the two letters UN as having a certain glimmer, holding aloft the flag of proactive contributor to peace based on the principle of international cooperation. Japan is determined to undertake Security Council reform in order to transform the UN into a body appropriate for the 21st century and then as a permanent member of the Security Council carry out its responsibilities in making still greater contributions towards world peace and prosperity. Newsline's editor-in-chief, Miki Ebara, is covering the UN General Assembly in New York. Miki, this is the third time you've reported on Prime Minister Abe's speech. What's your take this time? Well, Abe's been quite consistent in his message to the world since he came to the UN for the first time. Two years ago, after becoming Prime Minister, Abe told the UN he wanted his country to become a proactive contributor to peace. That's the same expression he used in today's speech. He also said then he wanted Japan to be more active, actively engaged in UN peacekeeping. But back then, there were many legal constraints. For instance, SDF personnel could only use weapons for self-protection. But right before this trip, he managed to have national security legislation enacted. It expands the role of the self-defense forces abroad. It also enables the SDF to adopt rules of engagement for use of weapons and to play additional roles such as protecting civilians. So today, Abe told the world Japan is ready to participate in UN work and peacekeeping. He also repeated his hope for Japan's permanent membership in the Security Council, a goal the country has pursued for a long time. Other points Abe made include Japan's plan to financially assist refugees for, from Syria and Iraq and countries that host them. Abe didn't forget to stress his efforts to empower women, spread respect for the rule of law, and eliminate nuclear weapons. He also touched on, nuclears, uh, on North Korea's nuclear and missile programs and abductions of Japanese citizens. But he chose not to mention other regional security issues, such as tensions in the East South China Sea. A vocal critic of Japan's new security legislation has received a death threat. The new laws allow Japan to exercise its right to collective self-defense. Meiji Gakuen University student Aki Okuda is a leading member of a group opposed to the laws, which were enacted in September. The university and other sources say another university received a letter addressed to Okuda on September 24th. It contained a threat to kill Okuda and his family members. Okuda and other students launched a protest group called Students Emergency Action for Liberal Democracy, or SEALDS, in May. SEALDS organized protests against the government-sponsored security legislation outside the Diet Building. Okuda also appeared at a Diet hearing to share his views on the legislation. Okuda says he's filed a complaint with police. He tweeted that he doesn't understand why his family has also been threatened. Meiji Gakuin University said in a statement that the threat is an unforgivable act against freedom of speech. The university is taking measures to ensure the safety of its students, teachers, and officials. A tourist association in central Japan has staged an unusual event to promote the area's main fruit at the peak of its harvest season. <laughs> Participants competed to see who out of several groups of 20 could spit a grape seed the farthest. They were given two tries. They made various gestures in their attempts to spit the seeds as far as they could. Some said they wanted another try. Competitors ranging from young children to the elderly took part in the annual event in a town in Yamanashi Prefecture, a region known for its grapes. A man in his 70s was the winner in the first team with a distance of nearly nine meters. The winners of each group were given prizes of two kilograms of grapes. This is wonderful. I feel great.
He said the grapes were sweet and tasty and he would share them with his family.